Picture this. It's summer of 1917. You've recently been deployed to the Western Front of World War I, and you're issued your weapon. And it's this thing. This is some weird alternate history. This is my Project 1887 trench gun. And if you know your World War I and World War II firearm history, you know that this doesn't exist. Trench guns were not built off of Model 1887s. They were built off of, in general, Model 1897s, which were pump action, or Model 12s, and a couple of other variants. I think Ithaca made a couple as well. So what this is, this is sort of my little fantasy version of what a trench gun would be if John Moses Browning kind of forgot to invent the pump action shotgun in the model 1897. And, you know, war's still coming, so they have to make something else. So this is my concept of what it would possibly look like if they started making trench guns off of the lever action model 1887. What this started with is a unfortunately Chinese made because um, yeah I'm not building this with a you know thousands of dollars uh, original model 1887 but it is a PW87 um, they're made by I have no idea they're imported through Century Arms but they're made by like Guangzhou Firearms Limited or whatever but um, the gun itself is pretty good. Uh, you may recall my range video a, uh, a couple weeks ago where I had this out at the range, the same range video where I had my cannon out at the range. Um, but it works pretty well. It needed a little bit of breaking in and I needed a little bit of breaking in, developing that muscle memory to just slam that lever home to properly eject the shells. Um, but once I was able to get that slicked up a little bit. I got the action slicked up a little bit and then got my practice and my training slicked up a little bit. Um, it actually works really quite well. It ejects reliably. You just have to make sure that you're feeding it the right ammunition. Uh, so the base gun was, was pretty good. It worked well. So up front, what I did was I added a reproduction uh, model 1897 proper trench gun heat shield and bayonet mount. These are one piece, they're spot welded together, and they're actually available. A lot of people ask, like, you know, where hey, where did you get the heat shield? They're from Numrich, and they exist. They're like a hundred something bucks. They're not too hard to find. Um, they do include the screws up front. You'll notice I only have one guy up here now. The barrels for the 1897s that were trench guns were machined. They had little machine slots in the barrels for uh for those screws to lay. And this one, unfortunately, does not because it's a random Chinese model 1887. So what I was able to do on the front, I was able to file out one for the front. But first off, getting this thing on here uh, took a lot of, let's call it mechanical persuasion. Uh, it didn't just slide on. I had to literally beat this thing on here with a hammer. Uh, it's not coming off anytime soon. So any screw placement at the front is really just as an insurance measure to keep it from sliding forward. That being said, uh, eventually I will be filing out these two and then adding some, some more screws uh, just so that I don't have two holes here up front. But this heat shield and bayonet mount are on here extremely solid. They're not going anywhere. Um, I also added a leather sling um, which works really well. These things are a little tricky to install and the leather's a tiny, tiny bit stiff. You know, you need to kind of work them in a little bit so that they soften up. Uh, but it is still, you know, adjustable for length and everything else. You just have to have it hanging a little bit low so that you can clear the lever either to the side or straight through the bottom, but I generally will run it to the side. On the lever, you'll notice I've got this leather wrap. This was just something I found on eBay, and it's actually quite a nice piece. And it addresses the other big issue that I had with getting proper cycling is, you know, you like I said, you really have to just slam that lever forward to eject the rounds. 
and that can be a wee bit uncomfortable when you're just slamming this thin steel loop forward. So the leather here adds a little bit of padding and lets you really commit to working that lever. Um, I had to add a sling mount at the bottom, or at the uh, stock. The heat shield and bayonet mount have a sling mount built into them, uh, so I needed to add a corresponding one at the back. And it's just, you know, kind of a nice little setup. Uh, up top, I had a lot of people ask me like, hey, did you have to do any machine work or anything on the wooden hand guards? And, and no, I, I didn't. This fits pretty tightly on the barrel. But what I did do is it does stand a little tall. Um, how these work is they're really kind of a tall fit. So this, and it bends at like a 90 degree angle the steel. I bent that steel back down so that it's still off the barrel. You still have a good air gap there, but it just kind of closed the gap a little bit. Uh, I was then able to just put the wooden hand guards over it and tighten them in place. There is a tiny bit of bowing in the wood uh, where it does hit that ridge on the back. And eventually at some point I might sand that down a little bit to give it more clearance, but honestly, it kind of helps keep the hand guards on there tight. The hand guards on these are known for uh, getting a little bit loose with times and this takes care of that. Uh, the last big thing that I did was I had to shorten the barrel down a little bit. Uh, the barrel was about here. It's a little bit proud of where I wanted it to be uh, as this is a, I want to say a 20 inch barrel normally. So I had to cut it down to 18 and a half inches. Always be sure to measure properly before you start hacking away on a gun barrel, especially a shotgun barrel and was able to bring it down so that it is just behind the front of the bayonet lug, which is exactly where I wanted it to be, and is a proper legal length. I still need to do a little bit of touch-up bluing up front, uh, but overall, this thing's pretty much together. But really, what's the point of having a, you know, a trench gun known for, you know, bayonet charges and possibly war crimes if you don't have a bayonet? So I got a bayonet. I actually got two bayonets. Uh, the first bayonet that I got was the wrong bayonet, uh, but then I got the correct bayonet. I misread because reading is hard and I accidentally got a model 1907 bayonet uh, instead of a 1917 bayonet. So now we have a 1917 bayonet. And if you really feel like you need to reach out and touch someone, it is not hard to lock it there on the front of this. Uh, it has about a 17 inch blade on an 18 and a half inch barrel. I, I don't have enough space here to properly demonstrate how ridiculously long and just awesome this gun is. Um, so overall, the goal of this project was to just build, as I said, was just to build, oh, I can't keep this thing in frame this bayonet on here was to build, like I said, a fantasy version of a gun that never existed, of a military arm that never existed. They never made a model 1887 trench gun, uh, so I decided to. And overall, I really like how it turned out. This thing is, it's quick to point. It brings up really quick. You've got a good bead sight included here on the uh, bayonet mount, so it's like, it's not hard to actually aim with. This is a cylinder bore. So you're not going to be getting, you know, super tight groups or anything like that. However, I am talking to a buddy of mine to see if we could take this guy out and uh, do some upland uh, bird hunting with it. Uh, we'll, we'll see how terribly I do with that. But I'm absolutely going to go out there with a, uh, with a Brody helmet and, you know, try to slay some quail with this thing. But yeah, overall, I just wanted to see if it could be done. It can be done. Is it as cool as I thought it would look? It is as cool as I thought it would look. So overall, I really can't complain about this at all. I'm really happy with how this turned out. If you want to see the initial video of this at the range before I did all those mods, um, the video will be linked in the information section below. But we're going to get a new video out with all of the mods, with the bayonet. We're going to see what kind of magic we can do with that. So... As always, thanks to you guys for watching uh, the engagement on the channel because YouTube does tend to not necessarily shadow ban, but doesn't really like this kind of content. Um, any engagement that you guys have will help the algorithm to push this out to more people. And uh, so of course, thanks for watching.